I don't know, man. Car. He's really dark too, like Jesse. Oh, the British dude. Yeah. Yeah. That that's a, that's an interesting example too, because he he but he's also he's on a lot of British media. British media is kind of interesting. But it's a little different about British media. Jimmy Carr. Is yeah. His name. What's he up with? What's he up to? I don't know, but you know, he, I wonder if because of his comedy is the reason a lot of Americans don't know about him. Because you know, low key to kind of like break into the American mainstream, you gotta go and like. American mainstream media. You got to go on the interviews. You got to go on the TV shows. Not seeing this guy everywhere, anywhere. I you only see him like on YouTube. Yeah. Well, does he have like any Netflix stuff? That's also because I've been thinking about future media, right? Oh wait, I stand corrected. Here he is, the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, two years ago. Interesting. What was he promoting? <laughs> but uh, I, I, was, I wonder how. I was thinking about it. future media. Media is super centralized, especially before social media and the internet, right? And I'm 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 trying to percolate thoughts about how a decentralized media exists in the future, or less centralized. I was speaking of that, doing a lot of um, research on Web three. Mm-hmm. Kids are calling it now just the decentralized everything, and yeah, not necessary. Okay. And I was like, I was like, I was thinking like, dude, some things can't be decentralized. Like a big ass server can't be decentralized because it needs to be on a server. Right. But apparently it can. You can just use unused storage space like all over, all over the world, unused hard drive space all over the world. And like it's all like encrypted in little bits. And then when it's needed, it's just like used. that's what the remember I brought a proof of space. That's proof of space. Basically, using other, well, this specific project was using other people's computers as server space. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I'm just like, yeah, dude. So, like, but I mean, I think, I, I feel like theoretically servers could be decentralized. And that's, I think in the future, too, they could not be physical. I don't know how, but it just seems like a plausible thing to me. Yeah, I don't know how either. You're gonna have to it write a paper like on that. Just be energy. I mean, Tesla stuff. I feel like Tesla, Tesla, not the the company. The man was thinking of things and patent. I need. I didn't read his patents. I said I was gonna read his patents last week. Well, hey, like, what is what is basically the internet and the, information? Not even the, ex- the internet, like the software experience. It's just like circuits just turning on and off really fast. Is it? Yeah. How do you like make that just in the air? What's the circuit do? It just like shoots a little beep, little electricity. Beep, beep, beep. I, it's just like the wires, and those are the blinking lights. Uh, I, I'm not an electrician, but sure. I just know that like software is just like millions of those things, and those things on and off represent one, ones and zeros represent the ons and off. And well, it seems to me that this is primitive and that y'all need to step your game up and get away from physical internet, my my guys. It's a pretty marvelous thing. Well, let's make it it's more getting, marvelous. It's getting video on the internet. I found a thing called it's called DTube. It's decentralized YouTube. Okay. And I didn't really look into much how it works, but yeah, basically that's it. It's decentralized. It's on the blockchain. It is like videos and like videos that uh that get to the top are like voted so it's like kind of like a trust system and it's maintained by this weird governance protocol where like you get to vote on who is like in charge of the website but you can only vote 15 times so it's like Mm -hmm. number one is like the main like account like d2 official the number two is like i guess the guy like the main programmer that's like making it He's basically just like vlogging how he's like doing it. It's pretty interesting. And then cool. the rest are like some other people. Not a lot of like a, a lot of Indian like videos on there. Sure. And then I looked on YouTube to see if anyone's talking about it. Like no one's no one fucking knows about this thing. Right. DTube. I do think most things. One. There might not be a lot of. Demand for things to be decentralized. Like it's kind of cool and nerdy. But at the end of the day, like I said, if there's a cool product that people enjoy more in their lives 
then they're like, what's the point? I don't even know what that means if it is centralized. Two, well, two <laughs> most things that say they're decentralized, even Bitcoin and things are, are kind of pretty centralized. Like there's a there's a, a gravity of an amount of people that have most of the saying power and even DAOs and things. Yeah, yeah but like people, okay, well, two things. First, the Bitcoin thing. I think like people would think of Bitcoin as decentralized. Yeah, there's a lot of wallets and a whole lot of Bitcoin, but like the decentralized part is the authorization of the transactions. That's what's important. It's not being authorized by a single entity. It's being authorized by every computer running the software. That's the important part. Like who gives a fuck if 50% is hold, held by one person, you know? I mean, but that is kind of, there was someone saying that even with over 50% of people, it's hard to take over the authorization. But I mean, in a currency standpoint, it makes, it matters. There's a website that shows you how difficult it would be to take over 51% of the blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain, using the cheapest hardware. And it's at like $23 trillion or something. And then the other point you said that people don't care about decentralization. Uh, yes and no. I think not yet they don't care. I think Mark Zuckerberg is literally like leading the cause to people that are going to start caring about decentralization, especially when he has all this data and he's just like, just doesn't give a fuck about it. He's just fucking with it. People are eventually going to wake up and be like, do I really want like my data to belong to one company or do I want to go into a if social network, hit company, log in yeah. with what? If that company gives them a service that they enjoy and they don't care. That's especially what young people care about now. Yeah, but here's the thing about that. Like, let's say, it's so like with Facebook, you trade your attention for data, right? Or sorry, you trade your data for attention or whatever. So that's cool. Like, that's a fair trade. That's the terms and conditions. Like, you agree to give your time and they make lots of money off of your data. But then what if they get hacked or something and then your personal data is in the hands of bad people like you're not compensated for that like you can't really do anything and facebook doesn't try very hard to like make it right they just say oops and sometimes they lie about it or they'll tell you for years so i think that's like pretty fucked up and once people realize that they'll be like oh shit like what's I mean the what's the alternative why don't we just like make a social network where they're it isn't governed by a single entity. It's governed by people that like care about the protocol, you know? Yeah. So imagine Facebook, same Facebook, same idea. But instead of logging in with like username, password, whatever, your data, which they then own, you just hit login with Ethereum. And like, it's just connected to your wallet. It's not your actual identity. And boom, like all your shit comes up. And everybody that's using decentralized Facebook on their phone is the essentially the server you know and each new person that joins decentralized facebook is authenticated by all the other users so just like bitcoin so you're not getting bots and you're getting like way less spam you know sure. obviously that's a ways off because like internet needs to be super fast for that that's the basic idea of web3 now imagine that for everything Server space sounds like a pain point. But server space gets cheaper every year too. Sure. I don't know that for sure, but it makes sense. <laughs> like now yeah. you can buy a fucking uh, a terabyte memory card. It's crazy. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. But it's going to have to have a whole lot of marketing power behind it. Because the people that care about this stuff if they don't have a big old media outlet swaying their opinion, it's, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a, a home to get over in the future. It's a really it, it is Google a really owns, good product. Google owns there. all data, dude. I mean, does Google not have more data than Facebook? Google. Oh, has, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, Google has also Facebook Amazon data. too. And and that's what I'm saying. And that's why I'm so interested about Facebook's infatuation people's government media and people's by power of 
being next to them, people watching media and be under the government, their infatuation with Facebook. Because Google, AWS, probably owns more data than, than Facebook does. Facebook data is probably primitive. What does Facebook know about you? You like certain things? <laughs> no, the, the problem with Facebook is that they say they're not going to do something and then they do it anyway. They say, we're not going to track you across the web when you delete the app on your phone. And then they do it anyway. And then Mark Zuckerberg goes on trial and he says, no, we're not doing that. And then a year later, a whistleblower says, yeah, they are doing that. You know, that's the issue. At least Google and Amazon are like somewhat like truthful. Like, yo, this is what we're doing. This is what we're using it for. No bullshit. You know, like you can, you're either in or you're out. Mark Zuckerberg's like. That's why I think Facebook won't have more of a sway on people than Google and Amazon. I, I could see it maybe a catalyst for being people enjoying a monetization of their data. And if you have that <clears throat> narrative out in the public, then I think people might be willing to, to make projects and use projects that are data decentralized, especially if you can monetize off of it. Brave kind of does that. Yeah, you just need a good product. I think that Coinbase <laughs> NFT thing is a good start because that's interesting. I forgot about that. In interacting with NFTs is like harder than brain surgery at times. And they literally were just like, yeah, we're just going to put the Instagram inter interface on NFTs. And it's probably going to be a thing where you like hook up your debit card to buy an NFT. It's going to be easy as fuck. You're not even going to need to buy Ethereum, it'll just like switch it for you. Did they preview the platform? There's a couple images on their blog. I'm on TechCrunch. But now, imagine that like celebrities or people that are already influencers get on it and they have like these NFTs. People can see like what's in their wallet. Oh, fucking Tyler the Creator has this NFT. I want this, you know? Let me buy it from him. Fucking value, man. That's what, that's or they what people... sell tickets on there. True. Um, Lots of possibilities. Yeah, it will be interesting to see if Coinbase does something beyond just the art aspect of NFTs. Yeah, um, this art bubble is just because it, it could. There's cooler things that can happen. There's cool. There's cool. Yeah, but, uh, it's just all there, speculation it, it, shit now. Yeah, it's 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 classic what people have done in the art communities for a long time which is, is transfer a big amount of value in a painting some people are gonna get fucking wrecked um but it is also cool for you know um intellectual property um mr v was talking about that and i you know i love some some good old ip 